progressive web apps, okay? Superpowers for our applications, right? Uh, you know, apps, of course, are, are everywhere these days. Everyone has a smartphone just about, whether it's a, uh, Android or a iPhone or whatever. Just poor Windows Phone. I love that. I love that platform. It was so good. Uh, but it's fallen, it's, you know, burned in ashes. I still have a few phones kicking around, <laughs> uh, Microsoft uh, Windows phone. But anyway, uh, we'll leave that. That's a discussion for another day, right? Talking about apps. Apps are everywhere. Uh, and obviously, native apps are great. Uh, but more and more now, uh, people are relying less on actually creating dedicated native apps for each. In fact, next term, of course, we're going to be working quite a bit with uh, uh, .NET MAUI, uh, which is the came out of the Xamarin uh, initiative. And that's one way in C Sharp to make cross-platform mobile applications. But hey, you know, we're pretty good now with doing things like an MVC application or other web applications. And you know, this is actually a growing area as well, our progressive web apps. If, is there anyone here who hasn't heard of a PWA? I can almost guarantee that some of the apps on your mobile devices that you have right now are PWA applications themselves. All right, so let me get more into it. All right, so what is what is a PWA? Well, basically, it is just a website that gets installed as if it is an application, okay? Uh, advantages or characteristics, you might say, well, it's obviously very fast loading. You can make them offline capable. Now, there's different degrees to that that you can put into place. They have to be served through a completely secure connection. Otherwise, it will not support it, right? Now, they are very app-like, and even though it's technically using the built-in browser on the device, it doesn't look like uh, a website. You don't see the address bar. That's one of the main things you, you uh, don't see. Uh, other browser Chrome sometimes just disappears. So it looks much more like a native app. And in fact, if you're very careful, there's some tutorials on the, online that specifically talk about how to make it look like it's uh, indistinguishable from a native app and so on, right? But it is still web, right? So it's linkable, locatable, everything else. And you can publish it, your progressive web app, in all the app stores, whether it's Google or Microsoft or both, right? Uh, updates, of course, are automatic. Another great advantage that you're connecting uh, online. As soon as it sees that there's an update, it immediately installs it, and away you go, right? So what's not to like <laughs> about a progressive web app? The other big advantage is that you've already got much of the work done, right? You have a decent working web application already. So if you want to put it on a mobile device, a PC, Xbox, Surface, you know, they all support it as well as, of course, any Android device and iPhones and so on and so forth, okay? And the capabilities available, you might be surprised to actually just look at this list for a moment, right? Uh, push notifications, okay, fully supported. Uh, background synchronization, uh, local data storage as well, right? So much media playback, uh, credential management, and so on and so forth. Uh, Bluetooth, you know, so you want to uh, connect the devices with Bluetooth right from within your app and so on, peer-to-peer, -peer, okay, for uh, games and things like that. That can be tremendously powerful, right? So there's so much capability that we can add to our existing, quote, web application by turning it into a PWA. Okay. And, you know, there there's great support for this, right? Microsoft is still strongly backing the development of progressive web apps, but almost surprisingly, Google is as well. <laughs> uh, you know, in fact, it's kind of like a, a bit of a race car thing going on. Uh, at first, Google uh, really pushed it. Then Microsoft kind of took uh, the bull by the horn and was really promoting progressive web apps for a while. Uh, but now the pendulum has almost swung back to the other side, so Google is almost uh, taking the initiative on doing more and more development refining and improving the whole approach to producing uh, PWAs. So uh, bottom line of this point is that uh, they aren't going away anytime soon, right? So you're not going to waste your time. Unlike some other initiatives for developing apps that we've seen come and go over time, uh, you're not going to waste your time devoting yourself to learning a bit more about progressive web apps, that's for sure. That's not to say that they're going to completely replace native apps, okay? But, uh, you know, they are becoming more and more popular. A lot of things that you'd even half expect that these were native apps turn out to be, if you look more closely, you might even be surprised to find out that they are uh, progressive web apps. Okay? All right. So what does it take, then, to take what we've done so far, what we've been learning in this course and others that you've been taking, 
and turn it into a progressive web app? Well, obviously, the basic thing is start with a good, well-designed, well-functioning web application, whether it's MVC or not, right? Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be by any stretch, okay? But a good working web application is the way to start. Very, very strict, okay? It must be completely served through a uh, HTTPS connection. So I'm not sure if you know what it means here when it talks about a green padlock. Some browsers actually show the little padlock that way. It indicates that absolutely every resource that you're pulling, every graphic image, everything else that might be pulled in, every uh, any any linked resources, uh, JavaScript files that you're pulling in, and so on, are all coming through secure origin, right through HTTPS. Okay. Now, mind you, when you're developing locally, it's not so strict on this. Okay, local host is okay. That's considered secure enough. All right. The thing that really, really makes this work, okay, because you don't even have to have the app open, technically speaking, once it's installed and set up. Uh, what makes it work is a service worker. Service workers have been around for a while, right? Basically, it's a background script. Now, it's separate from any page. It gets installed from your application, but once it's there, it can run on the client device and be running in the background and doing its thing, right? It can be listening for notifications, it can be uh, you know, monitoring various events that might cause it to actually wake up the actual application and have it ready, uh, prompt you to do different things and so on, okay? So there's a lot that this background script is capable of doing, right? Another necessary requirement is you new, do have to supply a uh, manifest file. It's a JSON file and it has to have a minimum of four properties in it. They actually have to have the name, a short name, the start URL, and uh, display property, right, have to be defined. So that's, we'll look at how to put together basic, really simple manifest files, and then some things we might want to add to it later on. Now, mind you, as with so much that I've done in this course, I'm really just kind of introducing a lot of these things to you, right? Uh, you can then take this. I've got lots of links to documentation that you can then you know, delve into it much more, but obviously there isn't time, you know, to cover everything there is to know about PWAs in one or two lectures, right? So I'm introducing it, giving you something to, you know, take and run with it, right? Okay, a couple of uh, other basic requirements here. You must have, must have at a minimum, two specifically sized icons to work with your application. Because think about it, you know, if you're going to have this sitting on the home screen of your uh, mobile device, you got to have an icon, right? So there's two different sizes, okay, 512 and 192 square icons that you have to provide, okay? They have to be PNG files as well, right? Now, the path to where those are found uh, is something you add to your manifest as well, okay? So that's a requirement. And, you know, how do we then get all this into our actual, actual application? Well, the manifest has to be available on every single page of the application. So what do we have in our project structure that we're using right now with MVC that basically looks after that requirement, our underscore layout, right? Uh, that actually reminds me, I'm going to just come back to Visual Studio for a second here. Uh, I had a couple of students asking about what does that underscore layout, like how does that fit in with the views? We did talk about it briefly, but I have to confess, we went by <laughs> that whole discussion pretty darn quickly, right? I'm just kind of shrinking everything up here. I'm sure there's a quick and easy way to do that, but let me come down here to shared and point out here's our underscore layout, right? Now, we did talk about it before. It, of course, you see the doc type tag. That's the giveaway at the top. This is a legitimate, quote, web page, right? It has all the elements. It has a head section, a body section, and so on and so forth, okay? So this is a genuine you know, HTML page. But what happens down here inside this container, which we call the role is our main, okay? That's where we have this little one line of code, render body, right? Each and every one of our views right now, okay? Uh, when we actually ask for a view, so for example, let me pull up something, I don't know, patient details, whatever, right? Or edit, okay? This, of course, does not have, okay, things like our... Uh, our uh, doc type tag at the top and so on, okay? The HTML, the header section and all that. That's not part of the view. The entire view, this view and every other one of our views gets rendered in here, 
So that's what this render body does. It renders the body of the actual view, and so our, our views get put into the context of our overall layout page. Now, you can, you can have multiple layout pages defined, so you might have different layouts for different areas of your application, for example, and so on and so forth. Okay, that can all be configured. But right now, the way we're using it, we're using this one common layout, okay, and that's, of course, why we have our whole navigation system, our drop-down menus and everything else are all set up in this layout page, right? So every view gets rendered inside the context of this layout page. So getting back to that basic requirement that our manifest has to be on each and every page, that's why it's a perfect spot to stick it right here in underscore layout, and that way we're guaranteed it's available everywhere. Okay, so we're going to do that in a few minutes. I'm not going to take time right now. Let's finish our discussion first, then we'll go in and actually convert our application so far into a PWA. Any questions so far? Okay, all right, so the last thing we do need, okay, is we actually have to install that service worker, right? Now, we don't have to have this on every page. That would be overkill, for sure, right? It only has to be done how many times? Once, right? We only have to do this once. So what I like to usually do is our, our normal landing page, so to speak, right, of the overall application is our home index, okay? That's where they first come. When you first come to the app, you go to the home controller. That's our default index, and away you go. So that's where I'll usually put this little bit of script that I put on to actually install the service worker itself. Okay. All right, so that gets the basics in place. So now here I've got a whole bunch of uh, references for you right, to go and read more. So I'm not going to bring each and every one of these pages up, but uh, I'll, I'll bring up maybe one of them. So here's, you know, the general web.dev, right? Uh, Alex Russell, he's the main guy to blame, I mean, to give credit to uh, for this whole PWA approach, right? Way back in 2015, uh, an engineer at Google, uh, he really started the whole thing rolling. So, uh, you know, read through this documentation. It talks a bit about him and a bit about how it all started as well as a lot of the work that's been done to uh, expand and improve it ever since, right? This PWA Builder site, it's a good site to get basic code from. It helps you, it's like a little wizard. You can step through and it can help you take any existing website and you know, figure out what code you want to add to actually give it the capabilities that you're actually after. So I encourage you to have a look at that and play with it, okay? This is uh, on GitHub. Okay, this is a, a middleware that you can install. It's a NuGet package, right? So you can just go into the package manager console, uh, follow the instructions on this website. It talks about how to install the NuGet package, and you know, basically, you just add some configuration information into our existing, okay, our program CS file and so on to configure it in different ways, and it will actually generate, right, the actual things like the uh, service worker and so on. Okay, it'll actually generate the JavaScript involved. Uh, based on what options you choose, right? So very, very good resources for you to follow up with after our basic demonstration to learn more, okay? And then this is actually f the NuGet package itself that gets talked about there, Web Essentials, ASP.NET Core, PWA, right? So there's lots of uh, customizations you can do here, uh, different caching strategies, okay? And the documentation talks about it, so I'm not going to uh, try and summarize everything here in two seconds, but you can see there's different caching approaches, right? So uh, the default one we're going to use today basically is that just about every page you visit that you bring up on the screen will be cached. So you can go back to them. Even if you lose your internet connection, right, they're cached so you can bring those pages back up. Now, mind you, <laughs> if you lose your internet, it's no longer live data, right? It's cached data and things could have changed. But uh, being aware of that limitation, it's a little bit of a nicety that you can do that. Okay, so there's a lot of emphasis on caching strategies and so on. Um, now, let me just maybe mention this. It used to be really important. We used to do an awful lot of work as programmers developing what would often be called occasionally, occasionally connected applications. And still, it's worthwhile learning. I don't, I'm not downplaying the importance of occasionally connected applications. But how often these days do we really find we lose our internet connection? It can happen, okay, right? Stuff happens for sure. But, you know, more and more today, much more so than even a few years ago, internet service is almost ubiquitous, right? You go anywhere with your smartphone, pull it out, and 
you'd be shocked. Hey, I don't have a connection, right? It's almost becoming rare now. So does that make it less important to design our apps to you know, give us some functionality if we don't have an internet connection? Well, obviously you still ideally want to have that support there, but you know what? It's almost becoming something we can assume. We can assume to a great degree that most likely we're gonna have internet connections. So caching is great, right? And being able to continue working offline is fabulous. But you know what? If there's a difference between getting the app published and up there and out there and running right now, rather than six months from now after you work out all, all the bugs and all the details of getting it up fully uh, implemented as an occasionally connected application, why not get it up there now, right? Where 99% of the time it's gonna work perfectly even as it is, okay? All right, oh, just a note there at the bottom that uh, uh, there was a little bit of a change. Uh, uh, okay. Boy, 2021, that's a little while ago now, but uh, uh, you have to guarantee the service worker scripts actually work offline and at the minimum supply an offline page, a page that actually will come up and explain to the user, oh, you're offline, right? So that's kind of a requirement now, so it has been for some time. Okay, now there's a lot more to learn, as I said, but you know what? We aren't going to be able to cover everything there is to know about PWAs. So what I do have back in Blackboard, let me come back here. Blackboard, here we go, right? I have, uh, first of all, remember we had some requirements for some images, right? So I have a little zip archive here with a few images I'm going to use. Now I took time already, so it's, it's pretty basic stuff. I just downloaded this. Uh, put it, created a, in my Visual Studio, a folder called images right off of triple W root, okay? Anything you want accessible to the, with HTML links within your application, good idea to have it in uh, a branch off of triple W root, right? So I have these images extracted there. And then I have this little uh, code file that I'm gonna follow along here and I encourage you can have it open and follow along as we discuss this and get it put into place, okay? All right, now I'll mention right now that the code from uh, this copy paste file was actually generated by using that NuGet package. But I'm not even gonna install that. I'm just gonna take the code that resulted here and we'll just get it in place, okay? Just kind of point out the fact that you don't really need any magical steps. You just need code that works and that's all it takes. All right, so coming back to Visual Studio then. Okay, we've, uh, well, since I have layout up here, <laughs> I won't close it just yet. Uh, let me just save that change. Okay, so uh, to point out, so here under triple W root, here are my images. So here are my two icons of the required size. So I just found a nice free to use uh, image that I thought, oh, that kind of looks like a medical office, that's good. Okay, so that's what we're gonna, we're gonna come back and talk about those screenshots a little bit later on. I just need those two images. So the next thing I need, I have to add my manifest file. So I'll do that right here in triple W root. I'll right click. I'm gonna add a new item. Now it is just a JSON file, right? So I can just, if I'm smart, scan up and down here, look for a JSON file, there we go. Okay, now I am gonna call it manifest. Says why fight it, okay? I'll just call it manifest. And that just gives me a simple little JSON file, totally empty, right? So I'm gonna throw in my basic requirements here. In fact, I think I have one thing that isn't an absolute requirement at least, okay? So remember the things are a name, a short name. So <laughs> I shortened it a little bit, okay? The description is optional at this point, but it's gonna come in handy later on, okay? <clears throat> so I'm a little proud of my application here, can you tell? <laughs> All right, so here are the absolute minimum declared icons. So I have to, for each one, define the source or the path. Now, because it's off of triple W root, okay, then it's just slash images slash and the actual names of the two PNG files I added. Plus I have to indicate the actual size of the actual icons themselves that are being. So that's an array of icons, okay? Display is standalone, so that just means it's gonna look like a standalone app. The start URL, okay, is basically I start at the root of the application. Simple as that. ID, by the way, this used to be optional, but uh, they made a change, uh, I think last year at some point in time, to say that, you know, you really should have an ID, even if it is just gonna be the same as the start URL, right? Okay, all right, so that's good. So that's my basic manifest file. So that notice is created right here in the root of triple W root. All right, now I'm gonna put my 
service worker JavaScript file in the same location. So I'll right click, we'll add a new item here. So it will be a JavaScript file. There we are, JavaScript file. Now the name, you can you could use a different name, but the tutorial just did this, sw, okay, dot js, so for my service worker. Now I'm gonna copy paste code now. Don't panic too much about understanding everything in this code. As I said, this is actually generated by that NuGet package, right? So, you know, feel free to look through it and read all the documentation so you can understand what's going on in it. That's perfectly fine. But for now, I'm just going to basically get it in place and maybe we'll talk quickly about a couple of, couple of things that are good to know, okay, about this JavaScript file. All right. Okay. So, one thing I'll mention, there's this version number, okay, up at the top, right? Uh, this is useful because... If you want to refresh, okay, the service worker itself and the cache and everything else on the client, all you have to do is change the version number. And the next time they actually do connect with the app running on the mobile device or on the PC or on the tablet, whatever it is, as soon as it sees a different version number, then it will just refresh everything. So that's a nice thing to be aware of, okay? We must supply the offline URL, okay? So that's something else I'm going to add in a few minutes. I'm going to make a simple page. Once more, the path will just be the actual file name, simple HTML page, and I will once more put it where? In triple W root, right? So it'll be right there. That'll just be the simple path to it. Okay, so that's, you know, really, uh, I, if you read through this, basically what we're implementing here is uh, a simple, uh, we're just going to cache including any page that we display, okay? So essentially, all the pages that we see, okay, as we navigate around the application will get cached. And that way, if we lose our connection, we can actually go back and revisit those pages. They'll be in our cache and away we go. So we have some event listeners and so on. But as I said, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this. You can read the documentation because basically it just generates it for you and you're done, right? Okay, let's add that final bit there. The, uh, well, I should say final because we aren't quite done yet. But another new item, just a simple HTML page. Look at that, HTML page right here. So I'm going to follow the name I referenced it, and that was offline. So I'll call it offline.html. All right, so it has to just be a basic standalone web page. So, you know, I mentioned here in my copy-paste file, I borrowed it from, from here, okay, offline fallback page. Okay, that again, that was one of the links that I gave you in my PowerPoint, this web.dev. Okay, so that's where I got this particular chunk of code from. So, you know, it's kind of nice in that actually everything is incorporated right into the page, right? All of our styles are defined here and so on. So it doesn't depend on anything else outside of the page itself, which is a good idea for an offline page. But it does have some smarts built in here, right? So we do have, uh, besides the styles and everything, right, we do have some event listeners defined here, right? So it, it will automatically attempt to reload. You can click a button and ask it to reload. And that way, if you've gone back online, but a bing, the app will just come up and start working again, okay? It will even actually periodically just check, see if you can uh, see if you're available to reconnect the internet all on its own. Again, this is right from that tutorial site, the first one that I referenced there. All right, okay, so we have all the basics in place throughout the application, except, oh, darn, I closed it, but we know where it is. Right down here is shared, here's my layout, right? So here is where we said, perfect spot in our, okay, approach to building an MVC application here, perfect spot to throw in the link to our manifest, okay? So the href, just go to the root of the website, manifest.json, that's perfect. Now, every view that we bring up on the screen Okay, the manifest will be available for, and that's a requirement for the actual manifest itself. All right. Now, the last real step, okay, believe me, there's only one left, kind of surprisingly. The last real step is to somewhere make sure that we actually install that service worker, right? Now, I mentioned before that, in my opinion, one of the best places to put that is our initial landing page. How do I know it's the initial landing page? <laughs> well, remember, way down here in program.cs, Okay, we defined our, our default map route, okay? So the default is controller, but oh, what controller do we go to by default? Home. 
index action, okay? So if you don't specify any other route information when you request this application, it goes to the home index, right? Which is why I know that home index is a good spot for me to put this code. So I'll come up here, home index, right? And we've seen this before. Remember in our layout, right at the bottom here, right? Here's where we have this little line of code where we say render section asynchronously. What section? Any section with the name scripts, okay? It's not required that the page have a script section. That's why it says required is false. But if it does have one, then it gets rendered right into the page here. After all, the jQuery and the bootstrap and stuff and so on and so forth and the site JS, right? Okay, so coming back here then, all I have to do is add, as we've done before, a section, a section with the name script, right? Okay, so this is here just to register the surface worker, okay? Uh, of course, this isn't enough. You also have to have the manifest, but basically, you know, it checks, hey, if we already have the service worker, bada bing, we don't have to register it, we're good, okay? Otherwise, we go to the uh, navigator is basically the browser's ability to uh, work inside of the device that it's being hosted in, and we register this service worker. So, of course, if you did want a different name, right, for that JS file, you could just change it here, and you could use any name you wanted, right? Okay. All right, and there's some uh, console logging going on here, so you can check later on the service workers registered and so on and so forth. So believe it or not, that should pretty much be it, okay? All right, let's just uh, actually give this a try. Now, I think I'm set to use my Brave browser. Well, I think so. We'll see you in a second here. Probably should have done a build and checked for build errors, but I would have been told by now, I think, if there was one. All right. It's taking a little while. I think it's, I hadn't run it earlier after I unzipped the uh, archive, so it had to create the database and scaffold it. Oh, wait, it's open. It's just, <laughs> I clicked and it wasn't paying any attention. Sorry about that. Okay, here it is. Now, what do I see up here that's new? Look at this. I can hover over this and it says install. Install medical office, right? And there it goes, install app, medical office, and it gives the URL. And of course, it's a pretty boring looking URL. And there's that icon, right, that we provided. Now, there's install and cancel, okay? Let me just point out, if I copy that URL, let me go back to uh, Chrome here, where I have Blackboard open. If I come to that address here, okay, looks slightly different. Notice it actually even popped out there for a second in Chrome, but it gives the same thing, install medical office, and away we go. So... By the way, if you install it with more than one browser, you actually uh, <laughs> are doing kind of separate installs and you'll get a separate icon created for each one so that you can then go ahead and uh, actually click different icons and run it in different browsers if you ever wanted to. Usually the best idea is just install it with one browser and away you go. Okay, but I wanted to show that that works like that and so on and so forth. Now, the final bit of stuff I have here, they have added, they've been as I said, continuing to work on uh, improving uh, PWAs and so on and so forth. So one of the things that they've added is the ability to improve the look of this actual prompt here to install it, because that's, you know, maybe not very inviting. It doesn't give a lot of information about it. Even though I added that description property in the manifest, we don't even see it mentioned here yet, okay? So that's the next thing that we're going to do. So uh, I think I can weave this running. Yeah, yeah, I should be able to. Right, so let me just go back to Visual Studio for a second. I'll just point out where we're at here, right? Uh, oh, I also, oh, I want to hit F12 and show you developer mode before I do this. Okay, let me come back here. Doesn't matter which browser. Uh, F12, right? So here we go. You'll find an application tab along here. You can examine the manifest. Oh, look at that. It's mentioning right here. A richer, richer PWA install UI won't be available on desktop. And it says the same thing for mobile. Please add at least one screenshot with form factor set to wide, okay? And then for mobile, form factor not set to wide, basically, right? So by adding some of these additional graphics, and there's, you know, a link I'm going to give you here in a moment to kind of walk you through this process, you can improve the look of that little install dialog box that kind of comes up here. It will take time to do this, right, since we're kind of prompted anyway. But notice here, here's the service worker, right? 
So I see it's activated and stopped at the moment because you know we actually haven't actually uh, done anything here yet, right? I could actually manually start it here as well if I wanted to. And you can even look at the source, okay, right from that link there, right? Okay. All right, and there's storage. You can see how much local storage is. So you're allowed a certain amount of quota of storage. So you can store all kinds of data and so on. But as I said, this is just the basics. We're just getting, you know, the real basics in, pl in play here. There's lots of background services we can do, notifications, and so on and so forth, right? So that's all get added as you add more and more capabilities to your PWA. So let's just deal with this last little issue here, getting this richer PWA install. Oh, by the way, let me show you what that looks like if I come up here in Chrome and hit F12, right? Come to application, you see very much the same kind of information here, right, in Chrome as well. Okay, let's go back to Visual Studio. So as I said, I actually have a link. Okay, maybe I'll take time to open this link just to show you what I'm following along. It's this great site, web dev, right? Uh, maybe I'll use Chrome again. All right, how to add richer UI installs. So, you know, it kind of walks through the process, describes what you have to do, and so on and so forth, okay? So I just want to make sure you're aware of the references that are available to get this work done. All right, this won't take too much longer. I know we're, we're getting close to the wire here, but we should be under the hour. Okay, so getting my copy-paste file back up, I'll just move it off to the side. Okay. So I think I already pointed out that I do actually have, I just took some act, literal screenshots of the application running and I just saved them in specific sizes, right? So I've got uh, two different ones, screenshot one and screenshot two. And notice I have them in, like I have a letter N, okay, for the narrow, right, uh, versions. So basically, uh, I don't think I can, can I get properties from here? Let me see if I can. Uh, not very helpful. No. Anyway, all right. Um, but I just made them of a, a specific size and so on and so forth, right? Uh, I think these are a, a thousand by five hundred, and these are six twenty by or six forty by three twenty, right? The, just same picture, just resized to those different sizes. Well, actually, <laughs> I have it in my manifest file. So let's come to my manifest file, and I'm just going to add the information for the screenshots here. Maybe throw it right after the icons. Okay. So I have the graphics in place. So they're in images. These are the actual names. Okay. And these are the sizes, the type. Okay. It's, as it mentions in that tutorial, it has to either be a JPEG or a PNG, I think it was. Check the documentation on that. So form factor wide. That's a key thing. That is used then for like a large screen display, a PC, even a fairly good sized tablet and so on will default to a wide. Okay and the label, okay, it goes along with that, right? Uh, and then I have my narrow versions. Now, <laughs> as it kind of gave you a hint in the uh, instructions there, right, when we hit F12, anything other than wide is considered narrow, right? But I might as well put the form factor narrow in there as well. Okay, so that's the only real change I have to make, right? Uh, I already had the description. That's the other part of it. Okay, so let me just, uh, I'll just save, do my hot reload. Yeah, looked like it let me do it. So if I come back to Brave, now here I'll have to go control because you know how resources work in a browser, right? To get it to refresh all the CSS and everything, control refresh, and there we go. So you see those messages went away, right? So it's happy now that we're actually able to uh, do get the rich install. And you'll see that the screenshots are shown down here as well. Okay, now if I close this whole F12 business, okay, I just hover over, Still says install medical office, but now you see I have my screenshots showing and there's my, ooh, there's my description. The most awesome application in the world. Yes, crowds are screaming, yeah. Anyway, so it just makes it for a little bit richer of an install option, right? <laughs> Sorry, that, I think there was a comment. Well, anyway, all right, no problem. Okay, so that works here inside Brave, and if I come back to uh, Chrome, come back here. Now again, uh, I'll hit Control, Refresh, and then it's happy as well. And I get the same kind of look here. Now, not every browser in the world supports this rich UI. In fact, 
if I bring this up in, uh, I don't even think Microsoft's uh, um, current one actually supports it. But you know, that's again, I mentioned that it's like two race cars. One pulls out a little bit ahead and the other one. So at the moment, Google is a little bit ahead and Microsoft hasn't quite got this rich install working in all of their browsers. But uh, in any case, I might as well here in Chrome, I'll just actually click install. And there we go. Do we see the difference? Yeah, sure, why not, right? So now I have it. And so here's the look of it once it's up. Now, no longer do I see the actual uh, web address up top here, right? That's gone, but everything is working and functioning and so on and so forth, right? Uh, I can come to doctors. I can see pages here and things like that. And away we go. All right. Now, if I stop Visual Studio running, See, I can get back to pages, even though it's not running anymore because these were cached, right? If I try to go somewhere new that I didn't get to before, then I get told I'm offline, right? Okay, anyway, so that's enough uh, of a discussion. Any questions about, <laughs> about the actual PWA, right? As I said, we've always scratched the surface. There's so much more can be done. Uh, we will take time this term to actually add push notifications to our applications as well, because that's really neat, right? Be able to actually send out a push notification to select users or all users saying, hey, guess what, you know, uh, they're very useful if, uh, you know, everyone wants to be notified that, uh, uh, I don't know, like in our catering management, uh, that a new uh, event has been added to the system or things like that, right? Or maybe people want to be informed if a customer record has been modified, right? They want an actual notification coming on the device. Probably not. They might think it's a good idea, and you know, after a few hours of getting bing, ding, ding, ding all the time, they'll say, no, i got to turn that feature off. But yeah, uh, we'll, we'll get as far as adding that, but I think that's as far as I'm going to take the PWA installation within the time we have of our course. But kind of neat, eh? And, you know, as I said, the real advantage is Okay, look, there's my icon, right, right here on my, and it's also in my start menu, right? Uh, I can just click it and it just, oh, of course, I'm offline, but you see that's cached, right? Wow, amazing, okay? Caching really works. Now, if I go, try to go to the last page, yeah, oh my God, did it actually work? Even though I, I'm not running, am I? How did that happen? Amazing. All right. Well, anyway, there you go. I guess there was enough of the data cached that that was actually functioning. Uh, there we go. Now I'm offline. That's not available. All right. Well, that's the end of the demo. Any final questions about that? Okay.